This is the 415ers podcast. As always, brought to you on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Please go download, rate, subscribe. Also download, or pardon me, subscribe to our YouTube channel with 95.7 The Game. That's Mark Grandy. I'm Evan Giddings. We are at 415ers on Twitter, Instagram. Please check us out. Well, okay, so the other kind of quarterback news or, or rumors that were confirmed, so to speak, Mark, were about Lamar Jackson and like it was it was referenced by Dan Patrick and it, there wasn't necessarily a whole lot to it but uh the 49ers quote unquote explored Lamar Jackson according to the Dan Patrick show uh the 49ers mentioned or monitored everything including Lamar and um you know so it does appear I do have to apologize I mentioned in one of our podcasts that it was not right that the 49ers didn't even look into it and it appears they did mark so at least we know they're doing their due diligence when it comes to quarterbacks yeah, and uh, yeah, I, th- I think the report from the Dan Patrick show is correct. Um, I mean, John Lynch was also asked about it at the very tail end of his press conference earlier this week. He was asked, quote, did you look into Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson, and is that a possibility at all still? And he said, you look into everything, and we seem to be linked to everything. I can tell you, uh, I think it's how we, it's how convicted we are on Brock on this current group of guys, you're not doing your job. If you don't look into things, a lot of these things are really limited by the way the roster is set up, blah, 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 blah. Uh, So long story short, John Lynch says they looked into it, but eh, not going to happen. Uh, I think the reality of this situation is Evan, maybe John Lynch is downplaying. uh, I don't know the eagerness with which they looked into it or how realistic the chance was. But, I mean, of course, the 49ers looked into it and considered it. Again, as as John Lynch said, they are not doing their job correctly if they didn't. Um, but I, for one, would be pretty shocked if this ever got past an initial stage of the 49ers considering it. Maybe they they try to make a call. They, they reach out to Lamar. I don't, I don't know exactly how the process works. Um, but if they didn't, um, they're not doing their jobs correctly. And I, I don't think it really got past – there, I know you and I have talked about this a lot on the pod, uh, specifically one episode I can remember. But, I, I mean, it just seems so far-fetched. They have to check in on it, but I don't think it ever got past the, the really the first stage. No, the conversation probably goes something like this. So I'll play John Lynch. Make a call. <laughs> Make a call. Hey, hello? Uh, hey, Ozzy. Yeah, over in Baltimore. Hey, you know, I I saw Lamar, you know, he's kind of had some contract troubles and it, it doesn't look like you guys are, you know, going to exercise, you know, anything beyond the non-exclusive franchise tag. You guys aren't looking to pick him up and give him that fully guaranteed deal. Uh, you know, I just wanted to call and see, you know, might be able to prime off you for a couple picks. Is, is that going to work? <laughs> no? Okay. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Bye. Like that's that's how I see the conversation going, <laughs> especially with the way that the 49ers offseason played out signing Javon Hargrave. You don't have much money to spend. You're trying to see maybe you can pick up something cheaper than it actually is. And then after the Baltimore Ravens say, yeah, no, like that's that's not happening. Then you put down the phone, you go back to work. That's probably how it how it goes down. Well, yeah, and I mean, what the the only bargaining chip that, that the Niners have when they're talking to the Ravens is, hey, at least we're in the NFC. You don't want to trade him to someone in the AFC. You want to get him out of your division. You want to get him out of your conference, so you never have to play him. That would be the ideal situation. Um, so that's probably the only thing that the Niners have going for him. But the problem is, everyone else in the NFC is making that same exact pitch to the Baltimore Ravens and to Lamar Jackson. The other thing is, um, because of the way that it's it's going on right now, Lamar Jackson is free to negotiate with other teams. He also has to want to go to where you are. Like it, It's not just up to the Ravens to trade him. Because of the non-exclusive uh, franchise tag that they've placed on him, he can negotiate elsewhere. He can agree and sign a contract, agree to terms with a different team, and then that contract, those terms, go back to the Ravens, and the Ravens can say, sorry, Lamar, we're taking you for that amount of money. You're going to be a Raven for this year. Or, you know, they say no, and then he's free to to sign with that team. So it's more than just agreeing to the Ravens on something. It's agreeing with Lamar Jackson about it as well. I'm not saying Lamar wouldn't want to be a 49er. Uh, 
it's I, I can't find an exact reason why he wouldn't want to be. It seems like a great chance to win with him. And you and I have talked about how good the offense would be with him. Uh, but it is also a little more difficult than just a normal trade because there is this this contract issue still up for grabs as well, which is the big holdup on, on this whole thing. Yeah, there's a lot of details both in the trade room as well as financially and, and some hurdles that they would have to jump in order to make this happen. But I will say this when it comes to Lamar Jackson. In my opinion, file this under... Okay, we're, we're talking about quarterback stability, a hierarchy in a quarterback room that the 49ers have not been able to figure out one through three consistently for the better part of Kyle Shanahan's tenure, right? Yeah. File this under the quarterback potential stabilizing move or moves because Kirk Cousins was the name in 2018. Tom Brady was the name in 2019. Aaron Rodgers was the name in 2020. Lamar Jackson is going to be that name, I think, this offseason that we'll look back on if the 49ers do not win a Super Bowl in the Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch era as, well, maybe we maybe we might have, maybe we should have looked into that. Maybe we, we, we should have tried to take a chance on a quarterback because at each and every turn, Mark, the one thing that seems to be holding the 49ers back from hoisting the Lombardi Trophy is their signal caller. And I'm completely on board with the way that they have organizationally gone about building their roster. They've been very competitive. They've been very intelligent. They've handed out good contracts. They haven't made these big, you know, aggressive, bad moves. But if they do not win a Super Bowl, I do think there's going to be a lot of people that will look back at these inflection points or potential inflection points and saying, how come we didn't go out and get a quarterback? I understand what you're saying. I do think this takes us back a little bit to what we talked about earlier this week. You remember when John Lynch was talking about Brandon Ayuk and, you know, the potential problems that arise next year. Uh, and he said, we're trying to do something, you know, big, like great. We're trying to accomplish something great this year. The only reason why this Lamar Jackson conversation gives me pause and the only reason I don't immediately rule it out is because of that sentiment from John Lynch. It seems like the 49ers are 100% all in this year. They're going to do everything they possibly can to try to win a Super Bowl this year. They'll deal with all the issues the following years because they can read the writing on the wall. You brought up a couple of the contracts coming up. I mean, George Kittle has an out coming up soon. There's the issue in the wide receiver room where it seems like one of those soon-to-be high-paid guys in Brandon Ayuk's case, will likely not be a 49er for more than a season. Uh, obviously, Trent Williams is nearing the end of his career. Who knows how much longer he will play and if he can continue to be at an all-pro level for the rest of his career. The Niners can see the writing on the wall, and as a result, they are putting all their chips into the middle of the table. And for that reason, Evan... That's the, the one thing in the back of my mind that doesn't allow me to fully rule out Lamar Jackson. That's probably like 1% for me. It's, it's still like absolutely the, the, the far unlikely scenario that the Niners make any legitimate run at Lamar Jackson. Um, but because of the way they are approaching this season, which seems to be coming from a now or never mentality, that, that's the one thing that, that kind of keeps me involved in this conversation yeah and i think it's one that will naturally surround the 49ers until they win it all i mean everyone's going to be second guessing what they've done at quarterback unless they win that's really the only way to quiet the doubters so i'm, I'm 100 with you